you mean I don't believe in God? Talk to him every day. What do you mean I don't support the 5e system? I read the rules to you. What do you mean I can't get to the session on time? Got nothing better to do. What do you mean I can't pay for my books? Do you think I'm broke? If there's a new build, I'll be the first in line. It better be good this time. Now, can you put a price on peace? Welcome to Pack Tactics. Peace sells, but who's buying? Emboldening Bond. As an action, you choose a number of willing creatures within 30 feet of you. This can include yourself, equal to your proficiency bonus. You create a magical bond among them for 10 minutes, or until you use this feature again. While any bonded creature is within 30 feet of another, the creature can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to an attack roll, an ability check or saving throw it makes. Each creature can add the d4 no more than than once per turn. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Regain on a long rest. People think you can't use this for initiative because you cannot use this more than once per turn. And supposedly initiative is not a turn, but that is not how it works. It gives a limit during turns, not a limit that you can only use it on turns. So this does work on initiative if you want to add it. Now that that is out of the way, let's consider why this is crazy good. This is basically half a paladin's aura of protection that works with both saving throws and attack rolls, especially with optimized marshals. The additional to attack rolls can increase the party's damage by a lot. Because of the 10 minute duration, you can even use this before a fight to not waste action economy. Also, majority of the times in adventuring environments like dungeons, you can even use it multiple encounters in a row. And its effects even work with similar effects like Aura of Protection and Bless. Bless also adds 1d4 to attack rolls and saving throws, but they aren't exactly the same because they don't share a name, so they work together. This feature is why you pick Peace Cleric, and because you get it at level 1, it makes it a really good dip. Like Peace Cron by Daniel on Tabletop Builds has a level in Peace Cleric together with Cronergy Wizard, which is one of the strongest builds in the entire game. Since Tasha's, this has kind of become the new Hexblade dip. It gives you armor proficiencies, good spells, and a fantastic feature. You always want a Peace Cleric in your party. They're so great. But for some odd reason though, this dip seems to be a lot more hated than Hexblade from what I've seen. But I actually actually like it. Unlike Hexblade, this one encourages team play and just makes everyone better with the bond and not just one guy picking the subclass like Hexblade does. It has bond in the name. You're bonding with your fellow players, making them better and stronger. Sounds optimal. By the way, get with the times, guys. We're not in Xanathar days anymore. Hexplate dips aren't boogeyman. They never were. I'm here to bring peace. Let's look at examples in play so you can kind of see how this works. Here's two balls, and this is what the max distance looks like. It's actually pretty far. It even works through walls. It's about being close to each other rather than line of sight. Especially when multiple people have the bond, it gets pretty easy to have your friends in range. Like here, Gator is really far from the top bolt, and vice versa, but they are both within 30 feet of me. So everyone gets this bonus. You see, I bring peace to the land. I'm a peaceful kobold, loved by everyone. Now for the other features, implement of peace. We're skipping this, you know what it does. The domain spells include some classic cleric spells that are pretty good like Sanctuary, Aid, and Greater Restoration. Rary's Telepathic Bond and Sending are also pretty useful in most games. Thumbs up! Hallelujah! Level 2, their Channel Divinity, Balm of Peace! As an action, you can move up to your speed without provoking opportunity attack, and when you move within 5 feet of any creature during this action, you can restore a number of hit points to that creature equal to 2d6 plus your wisdom modifier. A creature can receive this healing only once whenever you take this action. This works pretty nicely to get people up from 0 HP or heal the conjured animals. You can even use this on your party before a short 
rest to heal some extra HP because you get your channel divinity slots back afterwards. Kobold, are you going to talk about the amazing 6th level feature now, please? Gator, at 5th level, we get 3rd level spells. That means Spirit Guardian's time. You hold aloft the holy symbol and speak the words. And in a dazzling flash of light, the spectral figures spring forth. They begin to circle you, brandishing weapons, defending the area, and lashing out at your foes. Kobold, help me turn it off! Ow! Ah! This video is sponsored by Describe, where you can get professionally written box descriptions of absolutely everything, thousands of scenes. Last time I brought up their maps, I talked about their new hangar bay, and now they've added three new maps! Shrine entrance, an ancient arena, and now finally a skyship. It's a stargazer, perfect for a spelljammer adventure! These aren't normal maps, by the way. Like, look, I'm mousing over this random room in the fore cabin, and it tells me this room is an officer's dorm. From there, it describes the dorm itself for the players to interact with. Putting this map on Roll20 and other VTTs is super duper duper easy. This is very minimal environmental work for you, Mr. DM. All you have to do is read the text. The only thing you have to worry about now is describing the NPCs and the weather. Then when you want an encounter, you can throw a dragon at them. These guys probably have some epic descriptions for that too. Or you could just take this map and duplicate it. Oh no, space pirates. Like it's really easy. I highly recommend you check them out and if you do please press the link in the description. That helps me too. Describe.com slash packtactics. And if you like what you see they hope to earn your subscription. Use the code packtactics at the checkout to get 10% off your first subscription payment. That's packtactics in one word by the way. Back to the video. Here we go. Okay. I've been waiting many months for this. <laughs> It's not that good. It's not as good as you think it is. What? Let me read the feature. Protective Bond. When a creature affected by emboldening bond feature is about to take damage, a second bounded creature within 30 feet of the first can use its reaction to teleport to an unoccupied space within 5 feet of the first creature. The second creature takes all the damage instead. I agree that this looks amazing because you can take hits for people like a tank, but it's secretly not that great in parties that optimize a bit because it's outmatched by a lot of other already accessible options. To put it into context, let me sketch you a picture. Your friend is in melee and takes a heavy hit. You think about it and you make the correct assumption that splitting the damage the enemy is doing is good for the team. However, you are in melee without your reaction. Oops, no shield, no absorb elements anymore. Melee is dangerous, guys. You don't want to be there, especially without the protection your reaction action gives you. But Kobold, not everyone has those spells, and Protective Bond works at range too. Yeah, I know, using your reaction is not really an opportunity cost at many tables, but it is once you optimize. Shield can block an attack's damage entirely instead of just sharing it, or even multiple attacks. Absorb elements halves the elemental damage, which is usually a lot. Like take Dragon's Breath for example, that is on a re charge because it's so strong. And while it is true that protective bond works against ranged attacks, our problem is kind of the opposite there. Ranged attacks normally do a lot less damage than those in melee, which makes it not really worth using the feature for. Like look at champions, warlords, and blackguards, and stuff like that. They basically do half damage at range compared to melee. And of course there are exceptions here. Maybe your party member is at ranged and is at really low HP. Which which does make it worth it to take a hit for them. Or maybe you're fighting giants, which do do a lot of damage at ranged with their giant rocks. It's just that generally, this feature is only really good when you don't need to optimize too much at your table. And while a lot of things are good at those tables, so I wouldn't call this feature specifically overpowered. That's my two cents on protective bonds. If I was heavily optimizing, I wouldn't care about this feature. I would only care about the first level piece. 
Next, potent spell casting. You add your wisdom modifier to the damage you deal with any cleric cantrip. I like this more than Divine Strike, which adds damage to weapon attacks, but I don't think you should be attacking with a weapon at this point. If your wisdom isn't that high, you might want to consider picking Blessed Strikes instead from Tasha's, which adds 1d8 damage instead of your wisdom modifier. Capstone, Expansive Bond. The benefits of your Emboldening Bond and Protective Bond features now work when the creature are within 60 feet of each other. Moreover, when a creature uses uses protective bonds to take someone else's damage, the creature has resistance to that damage. Double the range is very good, not saying that it's hard to stay within 30 feet of your allies, but this allows more breathing room, especially if you have mounts like Phantom Steed or Fine Greater Steed. This also improves protective bond, but ah, uh, still not very good, but it's a lot better. Like if a dragon breathes fire on your friends without absorb elements, this basically allows allows you to still reduce the damage that dragon does, as if your friend had absorb elements. Anyways, conclusion, so I hope it's clear now that this is a very front-loaded subclass. You basically get all the good features at the start, but that kind of drops off quickly. To sum it all up, this is the Hexblade of Clerics. Do I think it deserves all the hate it gets? No, but this is kind of power creep which is probably not good, but at least this one can help marshals. Overall, I approve, it's a team-focused subclass. Peace sells and I'm buying. Special thanks to Quetz and Daniel who both come from Tabletop Builds. They helped me write this video. Me and Describe hope to earn your subscription. Thank you for watching. Bye.